Well, I would say that there's still a good chance. I wouldn't put a probability on it. And we're seeing the final stages of a very tough negotiation. Mm. There's no doubt it's in everyone's interest that we get a deal. And there's no doubt that Boris is going to try very hard to do that. I mean... Your, you and your colleagues tell me he is trying very hard, yeah. but we had Angela Merkel on the phone to him yesterday saying, as far as she was concerned, the only deal had to involve Northern Ireland staying in the backstop potentially forever. Sources in Downing Street at that point say to me, looks as though we're not going to get a deal. Aren't they right? Well, you know, the truth is that if the EU doesn't compromise at all, then the UK will be leaving the EU without a deal. So what they're seeking to avoid in Northern Ireland becomes much more challenging. So actually what we really need here, we've put a really well thought through compromise offer, which let's be clear, Parliament could potentially get behind. I mean, there were a number of people in Parliament who've previously been very strongly against Theresa May's withdrawal agreement, for example, who are saying that they could support this deal. So. Boris Johnson has compromised. He's put together this deal. It's for the EU now to come to the table and find a way forward with us. But EU sources are saying to me that they don't believe that the customs arrangement would achieve, they say has to be achieved, keeping the border open, protecting their single market, by the end of 2021, which is the current deadline. And that's why they are saying... There needs to be some form of the backstop, which Parliament has already rejected. Just to be clear, if they said there is a deal, but it would require a backstop that perhaps was time limited or perhaps we could get out of at some point, could you accept that? Well, I mean, the point is Parliament voted against the backstop um, that was in the previous withdrawal agreement three times. So Parliament won't wear it. So the government, this government has made clear that we will not accept so the So no version of the backstop? There won't be the backstop. The, the UK Even will a time-limited version? The EU will be. leave the customs union and the single market entirely whole and there won't be the backstop. Even for a short extra period? Well, you know, this is a very tough negotiation mm. and Boris set out very clearly the red lines, which, which were that we would not entertain a backstop. Uh, and I just want to be clear, I'm sorry to be trying to be precise about this. I think you are saying even a time-limited backstop is not acceptable. That's right. OK, that's very helpful. Um, now, in that telephone conversation with the German Chancellor did seem terribly important. In fact, it was so important that Downing Street rang up people like me to tell me all about it. Boris Johnson didn't tell the Cabinet about it. Were you a bit surprised by that? I don't ever talk about what goes on in Cabinet and definitely not Some on Some of air. your colleagues have talked to me about it and they say they were amazed they weren't told about it, given that the conversation happened just before Cabinet. Well, you know, we at, at Cabinet we discuss a huge range of subjects and they're not for public disclosure, so I, I just won't comment on what goes on in Cabinet. You were in Theresa May's Cabinet uh, as well as, obviously, the current Cabinet... Do you feel that ministers are better or worse informed by Boris Johnson than they were by Theresa May? I mean, I, you know, again, I won't comment on what goes on in Cabinet. No, but this is not this, detail. This is sort of general right? question yeah. about the role of Cabinet yeah. and the power of Cabinet. So I would say that there is every bit of... Uh, open discussion where there are frank views exchanged and welcomed to be exchanged under both um, prime ministers. And I think we, we do have you know, a range of topics that we discuss. But obviously, since Boris became prime minister, there is a big focus on making sure that we get a deal, that we get Brexit done, that, and that we then move on to deliver on what are people's priorities around things like the NHS and more money for schools and more police and so on. So we're trying, we're at great pace at the moment. There is definitely a lot to get through. But you're feeling you're getting the information you need. Yes, definitely. Because some Very of your much colleagues so. don't, don't, don't yeah. seem to agree. Another thing they raise is that his senior advisor, Dominic Cummings, seems to have an enormous amount of independent power. Some of them were a bit shocked by this memo that, or this text that he wrote to the Spectator magazine. Are you a little bit shocked by quite how much power Dominic Cummings seems to have? I mean, I, I have the greatest regard for his ideas, his, uh, his you know, determination to get the job done and work with him very 
very positively and very proactively. So, you know, I'm, I'm not going to comment on what I think is you're alluding to, which is a leaked text. I'm not sure it's been attributed to him. But just to be clear, you're not uncomfortable that he operates without the normal checks and balances? I think the Prime Minister has a huge amount to, to work through. He wants to get Brexit done so that we can get back onto the domestic priorities of people in this country. And, you know, for me as Business Secretary, we've got some fantastic projects around the path to net zero emissions, so to tackle global climate change and all of the amazing innovation that's coming out of the UK. We want to get on and start talking about those things. And in order to sure. do that, to give businesses certainty so they can make investment decisions, hiring decisions and so on. We have to get Brexit done. So that's where all the energies are focused. And Boris has some very good advisers so around I think you're him saying it's good, good that ideas. he's got... I think you're saying it's good yeah. that, that we, Cummings we need, has got this latitude, this freedom. Well, we need people with energy and dynamism and ideas. And that's what Boris has around him, including Dominic and others. You know, I'm, it's, I'm not singling out Dominic, but it's really important that we move forward at pace, get Brexit over the line and then move on to the domestic things that people really care about. But because I just want to show you a tweet that the Northern Ireland Secretary, Julian Smith, put out after that leak of that text where he said that he was deeply concerned. You can see it on the screen there. Uh, he said he was deeply concerned by what was in the text, which was that with security uh, cooperation might be withdrawn with the EU and the Republic of Ireland. So he's clearly feeling a bit uncomfortable about the things that Dominic Cummings is saying. Well, I haven't seen Julian today, actually, but um, he and I um, sit on many committees together um, absolutely focused on ensuring that we do everything to protect the Belfast Good Friday Agreement and that we support Northern Ireland in all circumstances. A huge amount of time and resources are, are, are being used to ensure that Northern Ireland is protected in all scenarios. Now, how confident are you that we will be leaving the EU on the 31st of October, given that Parliament has voted for a Brexit delay if there's no deal? So the law says that we will leave the EU on the 31st of October. And so the Ben Act makes some other um, legal proposals and the government abides by the law. But I'm quite clear that we are determined to leave the EU on the 31st of October, regardless of whether there is a deal or isn't a deal. But our absolute priority is to ensure that there is a deal. That's now, what we're really focused on. If there isn't, Prime Minister has told the Scottish courts he will write this letter requesting a delay. Now, Downing Street are also signalling to me that there would probably then be a second letter from the Prime Minister saying he personally and ministers don't want a delay. Is that an appropriate way to go, do you think? Well, it is quite clear that the government's policy is that we do not want to delay. I don't think anybody can be in any doubt about that. So I think it's perfectly reasonable to make that point very clearly. To the EU? Absolutely. And, and, and make, and, and, we and make that point every single day to every possible news outlet. So it's, it's perfectly clear to everybody that Boris Johnson is determined mm. to get Brexit done on the 31st of October. Now... In Downing Street, again, they seem to be reconciled that if the EU, despite what the Prime Minister says to them, gives a delay, in those circumstances, there would almost certainly be a general election. What should be in the Tory manifesto? Should it be a straightforward commitment to a no-deal Brexit? Well, I think you know, Boris Johnson has attempted to get a general election um, multiple times. He's challenged the opposition to have a general election, to let the people settle it. But instead, what's happening is the opposition are determined to try to tie his hands to stop us from leaving the European Union in line with the referendum. That's completely anti-democratic. And so when we do finally get that general election, when Labour finally decides to concede that it's right for the people to decide how we take this forward, then obviously our manifesto will be set out at that point. And but that with, will but with the Brexit Party and Nigel the Farage campaign on a platform of a yeah. no-deal Brexit. Many of your colleagues tell me you have to campaign also for a no-deal Brexit, otherwise the Brexit vote will be split. Well, you know, what's really important is that we deliver on the referendum and that we leave the European Union. And if for some, if, if, if there is in any any sense of the word, 
a general election where the Conservatives are not seen to be delivering on that, that's when we'd have problems. So we will absolutely have front and centre of our manifesto, if we haven't already left the European Union, that we will absolutely ensure we do so. I think you're, so, I think you're saying that your preference would be for a pretty unambiguous commitment to a no-deal Brexit in those circumstances. So I'm definitely not predicting or hoping for those circumstances. It is our clear Sure, no, I get that, but, but they might happen. The but they might happen. You've got to accept they might happen. Well, I'm, I'm not actually accepting that that might happen. I think we are determined to leave on the 31st of October and then to move on and then to fight a general election on the domestic priorities sure. that people have. But That's I think you are saying, important. nonetheless, there has to be an unambiguous commitment to an early Brexit in the circumstances which you don't want of a general election well, before Brexit. Boris Johnson and the Conservative Party will absolutely ensure that we leave the European Union in line with the referendum. And whatever, whatever that takes, we will deliver it, and we are determined to do that by the 31st of October. Um, one final question. we have almost out of time. You may have seen that the President of the European Parliament said today that he had had conversations with John Burko about the circumstances of giving a Brexit delay, and he told John Burko that in those circumstances, in his view, there would have to be either a general election or a referendum. Do you think it's remotely appropriate for the Speaker of the House of Commons to be having those conversations with the President of the European Parliament? Well, I think that the role of the Speaker is to be the impartial chair of proceedings in the chamber, not to get involved with political matters. But do you fear he is getting involved? Well, I think quite Because a lot clearly, of people have looked yeah. at this conversation and thought he's actually impugned his impartiality. Well, he is quite clearly getting involved. And what I'm saying is the job of the Speaker is to be the impartial chair. It's an incredibly powerful role. It's one that's incredibly highly respected mm. for the power that it wields. And therefore, it's absolutely vital that that individual is seen to be impartial and to not be picking sides and to not be interfering in, in matters that are so, political. So to, pa to paraphrase your possibly saying, wind your neck, or, <laughs> wind your neck in to well, the Speaker. Uh, I think you might say that, Robert, and I couldn't possibly comment. Andrew Ledson, very good to see you. Thank you.